Did you guys know that Dell made something that can boost your gaming performance by almost 300%? Yeah, neither did I. But we may need to put a large asterisk on that. This is the Dell PD-01X dock, and at first glance, it seems like a boring old piece of Dell e-waste. Well, because that's what it is. Or was? Taking a quick look around it, it has your standard ports to make your laptop more desktop-like. When I saw the back, this cover is what made me take a second look at this beast. I had no idea what I'd find under this cover. The Declaration of Independence, a wad of cash, maybe some less than legal substances. Nah, it was an expansion slot. And at first glance, I thought it was an AGP slot. So of course my mind immediately jumped to wanting to put a video card inside. Then I took a second look and realized it wasn't AGP at all. It was just PCI. Not PCI Express, just plain old PCI. What's the problem with that, you ask? Well, AGP has about five times the bandwidth of PCI, so to say that we might be bottlenecked is an understatement. Well, there goes my dreams of boosting my gaming performance on ancient Dell laptops. Or was it? I decided to do about 37 seconds of research and came across a single message board thread asking about putting a video card in this very dock. The comments were mostly party poopers, talking about how it wouldn't work, and that's not what the port was intended for, but my validation came from a lone commenter that gave me hope by saying that a PCI video card does in fact work. But it was a GeForce 5200. Well, that was it. Time to put this to rest. No way a PCI version of the 5200 was going to do anything worthwhile for my gaming performance. That's what a normal person would say. Me? I jumped on eBay and I found a 5200 for about $25, overpaying by about $24.99. So I got the 5200 and I thought, well, if this card works, what's stopping other cards from working? So with no idea of how long they actually made PCI video cards, I jumped back into eBay and started buying anything I could find that was newer than the 5200. When it was all said and done, I ended up with five cards in total. The original GeForce 5200, a GeForce 6200, a Radeon X1300, a GeForce 8400 GS, and the weirdest card of them all, a GT610. This thing has one gig of video memory, and from what I can tell, it came out in 2012. I have no idea who would have needed a PCI video card back in 2012. I mean, every motherboard has PCI Express by that point. So I had my dock and my cards, but I needed a laptop to power this ultimate gaming setup, and I settled on this Dell D410, well mostly because I already had it. This powerhouse is rocking a single core Pentium M at 1.87 gigahertz, one gig of DDR2, and that sweet, sweet Windows XP. It was time to test this all out and see if that random message board person was telling me the truth or did me dirty. Installing a card is pretty straightforward. You just remove these covers and drop the card in and she's ready to rock. Right off the bat, it seemed to be working. A surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. I took a peek in the BIOS and even found a setting for using a video card with this dock. So I don't know what those people were smoking in that thread. Dell obviously planned for someone to use a video card in this. Once Windows was up, it was more good news. The card was recognized and showed up in Device Manager correctly. At this point, I really wanted to throw some games at it, but I needed to see if the other cards would work. Next up was the 6200, which worked perfectly fine as well. See, I knew this would be fine. If one card works, then what's stopping the others from working too? I was pretty optimistic at this point, and I thought, nothing can stop me now. Then I got stopped. Every card after the 6200 refused to work. Well, they kind of worked. Let me explain. The X1300 and GT610 would both boot up normally into Windows, but I could tell right away that there was no graphics acceleration. Windows would have to redraw every time something was moved on the screen. It was like trying to load up pictures on 56K, like totally normal pictures of like cars or something. When I looked in Device Manager, it was giving an error on the PCI bridge saying there was not enough resources to start the device. Lame. The 8400 was interesting. Interesting in the fact that I thought it killed the whole setup. When I first booted it up, I got an error related to memory, but I pressed on. Right after that, the computer blue screened. And then it rebooted, and I got nothing. Dead. D-E-D -E -D, dead. Great, I killed the whole thing before I even got to use it. But not all hope was lost. I employed a secret tactic that you can only learn from years of IT support. Unplugging everything, and then turning it back on. With the cursed 8400 removed and back to the 5200, I was back in business. I had to come to terms with only being able to use the 52 and 6200 and pretend that I didn't waste almost $100 on already obsolete video cards that nobody wanted in the first place. 
but I'm a glass half full kind of guy and I had these two working cards, so let's see what they can do. First thing, I needed to get some baseline numbers to compare to. It'd be a shame if the integrated graphics were better than these dinosaur cards. I mean, it's a real possibility. It's not like these were ever top tier cards, even when they were new. Obviously, this is old hardware, so we're gonna be running games that match the time frame. I'm gonna be using 3D Mark 03, Half-Life 2, Doom 3, and Painkiller. These should give us some decent performance information to compare to. First up was 3D Mark 03. The integrated scored 1048 3D Marks, and while that was better than I expected, I was a little worried because I'm pretty sure my Dell Dimension with an AGP 5200 scored less than that. But let's see. The 5200 managed to pump out 1408, which is like 40% higher than the integrated. While this is great to see, something doesn't add up because I'm sure my AGP 5200 didn't score close to that. I might have to revisit that soon. Last up was the 6200, you know, the big gun. This came out with a score of 1,814 3D marks, 400 points higher than the 5200 and 800 points higher than the integrated. A pretty nice increase, but let's see if that actually translates into gaming performance. Half-Life 2 was up. I ran 800 by 600 resolution with a mix of low and medium settings. The integrated trip struggled pretty bad with an average of 21.5 FPS, but remember, this isn't a gaming computer at all. The 5200 was way smoother, pushing out 57.9, and the 6200 felt like it was running even better, but only eked out an extra 3 FPS over the 5200, with 59.6. Honestly, not bad at all considering what the stock scores were and the non-gaming nature of this laptop. Doom 3 was up next, and while it didn't perform as well as Half-Life 2, it was a really similar story in how the performance scaled. I ran 640x480 with low settings. The integrated chip chugged along with an average of 14 FPS. Not good at all, but I'm pretty sure this is about how I originally played it back in the day. The 5200 boosted our frames all the way up to 29.2 and felt way better than the integrated graphics. The 6200 pushed us over that 30 FPS threshold with 35.8 average. Very nice. Painkiller was interesting. The integrated graphics couldn't even launch it, giving some error related to DirectX 9. The 5200 launched it fine, but the frame rate was really bad. It basically felt like it was locked down at 13 FPS unless you got hit. Then it would jump up to like 50 or 60 FPS, then fall back down. The 6200 on the other hand had no issues. It played great and put out 38 FPS average and was very playable. While obviously not on the level of something like modern GPU docks, this obscure piece of Dell hardware legitimately boosted our gaming performance. It allowed me to game on a laptop that nobody ever even considered gaming on other than maybe Minesweeper to pass the time. There isn't a ton of info about this dock online, but I'm glad I got my hands on one to play around with and was successful in boosting my gaming performance even if it did involve a little bit of trial and error. I was surprised I was able to get such a wide variety of PCI cards, even if most of them didn't actually work with the dock. I really want to see how these cards perform, so I'll dig out a desktop that can use them soon enough, so stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. It's been a while since I've uploaded, life got in the way, and well, I moved. So it's been really hard to get back into the swing of things. Oh yeah, and at some point, I hit a thousand subscribers, so thanks for that as well. That's going to do it for this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.